Hey guys, welcome back to Just Fiddling Barbecue. Today, let's talk about keto. Alright guys, today I want to talk about the ketogenic diet. Um, from my uh, fiddling update video, I had a lot of comments want me to talk more about what we eat and kind of discuss the keto diet a little bit and uh, I was a little surprised that I got as many messages about it as I did so I figured I would just cover it and that's what this video is going to be about. Um, first of all I know this is a barbecue show but can you do keto and still barbecue in your backyard and all that stuff? Absolutely. Uh, I'm sitting here sitting by my trusty watching the stove and my next video is going to be using this watching the stove making a keto chili so stay tuned for that if you're interested in the keto stuff um, but first let me talk about what is keto keto is short for ketogenic diet um, and I hate the word diet because to me it's like a diet is something that you're going to do until you reach a certain point and then you're just going to quit and go back to the way you were and then you wind up gaining 10 more pounds than you had. Uh, to me this is more just about watching what you're eating, being aware of what you're putting in your body and and um, you know learning how that's going to affect your health and your body weight basically. And so anyway that's what we're doing is a ketogenic diet uh, eating plan. Um, but so why would you be on a ketogenic diet? Well, first of all, I know that with some of the research that I've done, it's, it is used by physicians to uh, fight epilepsy and, and seizures and that kind of thing in children. So they use this diet for that. But as an adult, um, and I do have some notes here just so I'll kind of stay on track. If you're suffering from, you know, you put on some bo uh, belly fat, uh, fatigue, uh, memory loss, or you know, short-term memory loss, or lack of focus, high blood pressure, anxiety, depression, those kind of things. Um, this might be a diet that's, that's for you. You know, everything that we put in our body affects a lot of things. You know, including our mind and and our body function and that kind of thing. So um, that's some of the reasons why. Uh, people get on the ketogenic diet um, and all of it is surrounded by uh, basically the ketogenic diet is a high fat low carb way of eating and uh, you know we've been told our whole lives that if you eat a lot of fat you're going to get fat and that's simply not a hundred percent the truth okay if you think about what we eat and if you think about when we eat anything that's fat, okay, just about 100% of the time, everything that we eat that's kind of fatty is accompanied by a crap load of carbs. And that combination is what escalates your caloric intake, what escalates your insulin spikes and and your glucose levels and all that stuff and that's when you start putting on all these pounds uh, and so this diet is training your body to burn your body fat for energy rather than all those carbs that you're taking in when you're taking in a lot of carbs your body burns the carbs and stores the fat when you're not taking in a lot of carbs it can't burn it anymore because it doesn't have any so it starts burning your fat for energy and so that's basically uh, where I'm at um, and so that's kind of the premise behind um, the ketogenic diet now before all the ketogenic uh, enthusiasts get all bent out of shape and send me messages and all that stuff about you're not doing true keto and and all this stuff please understand that I'm not telling you how to do keto and all that I'm telling you what I've been doing okay 
So if you're one of these people that, you know, have to eat 95% fat and and all that stuff and two grams of carbs because you sniffed the cracker, then go ahead and do that. Now that's up to you. Um, there's a lot of different research out there and some people say you've got to eat this percentage of fat or this percentage of fat or you can eat, you know, two grams of carbs, 10 grams of carbs, whatever, or you're not truly doing keto, whatever. I just talked to a buddy who, who recommended that I start out eating because I was what I was doing was a, a high carb, low fat diet. And I was seeing no results. And what he said was, you know, you need to kick up your fat level. It's gonna sound crazy, but kick up your fat level to about 60%. Uh, do about 10%, kick up your fat level to 60%, do about 10% carbs, and fill in the rest with protein. I thought, yeah, that does sound crazy, but I started doing a little research on it, and it sounded more like keto. So what I did was I just, uh, first thing I did was I downloaded my fitness pal, and I'll put a link up here, one of these spots, to that. It's a great app. To keep track of what you're eating calorically and uh, keep track of your macros. Macros, if some of you don't know, is your levels of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates that you take in. So this program, all you do is punch it in or you can just scan the barcode of any kind of product and it'll tell you the macros of that product. So it's very helpful. And you can set your goals in there. So I have set my goals for 70% fat, um, I think 20% protein and 10% carbs, I think, something like that. Uh, but lots of times I'll hit, you know, 75% fat and only 7 or 8% carbs and the rest protein. So it's somewhere in that area. I know that as long as I stay above 70% fat, for me, that's been working. So, and I'm only speaking for myself, again. So, um, that's kind of the premise behind the ketogenic diet. Um, so, after talking to that friend of mine, Josh, uh, that actually works with the Watchman Stove, he, um, he said 60%, so I just jacked it up to 70% and worked out my macros that way. And that's kind of what I've been doing for, you know, about two months now, I guess. Um, I will tell you about starting keto. It's a little rough the first week uh, because you've got to think that your body is so used to burning carbohydrates. When you take that away, it's almost like your body, you know, goes into DTs a little bit. It, it, it's it's all messed up. You know, I had headaches for a little while. There is a real thing called the keto flu where you just feel kind of not sick, but headache, you know, tired, weak, that kind of thing. And it's because your body is trying to make that transition. You know, what am I going to use for a fuel source now that all the carbs are gone? But after you get past that, then it starts getting easier. Now, with the way that I'm doing it, how do I know that it's working? I can't tell you a, a, like a, a pound weight loss of fat that I have, you know, I have seen uh, because uh, I can tell you that I have a net loss right now of about 10 pounds. And I say net because I've kind of been keeping track of it for this past two months, taking measurements and that kind of thing. and getting on the scale once or twice a week and um, I know that my belly if, if I measure all the way around at my belly button area I've lost about two inches uh, in two months uh, but my arms have grown an inch and my chest which includes my back because that goes all the way around have grown an inch and a half so, you know, because I'm going to the gym and everything, my muscles are growing, but my belly's getting smaller. And that's exactly what you want. 
Um, you know, if I wasn't watching what I was eating, but I was going to the gym, my belly would still be growing along with everything else. If I wasn't working out, but I was watching what I was eating, everything would kind of be getting smaller, I would imagine. So because I'm working out, but watching what I'm eating, you know, I'm gaining a little bit of, of muscle, but I'm losing a little bit of fat. And that net loss so far is around eight to 10 pounds. Uh, so, I mean, that's, that's kind of what I want, you know? Uh, I want to build a little bit of muscle, but I want to lose all this, all this fat that I've got going on. And I've still got a long way to go, you know? But it's like somebody else said, you know, it, and, you know, it takes you 20 years to put on all this mess. So it's not going to all come off in two months, you know. Be patient, stay the course, keep doing what you're doing, and, uh, you know, enjoy the results that you are seeing. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, let's see what else I've got here. Talk about that. Okay. Now, why is it called keto and... and Here's where we get into the scientific part a little bit and where everybody starts flipping out. When you burn fat for energy instead of carbs, your body produces what's called ketones. And that's what your body uses for energy, okay? So once you get into ketosis, that's when your body's producing ketones, using it for energy. You're burning fat. Your body's using those ketones for energy and you're rolling, okay? Here's the thing about what you're going to see if you do some research. Some people are going to say you can use, you can eat this. Sometimes you can eat that a little bit. Um, and then other people are going to just go crazy and say, oh, if you eat that, that's going to kick you out of ketosis. If you eat that, that's going to kick you out of ketosis. It's almost like if you get kicked out of making, your body making ketones, I mean, you just might as well just jump out in front of a car or something because your life's over, you know? The second thing about this whole process is I'm also, I've also set my calories per day to where I have a caloric deficit, which means I'm going to burn more calories than I'm taking in. I've set my caloric intake to about 1,800 calories. And so even if I do eat something or, or whatever that I'm not in ketosis, I'm still going to be losing weight because I'm still at a caloric deficit, okay? Now, if you combine the two with a caloric deficit and ketosis, you know, awesome. But I'm not, I'm not in what I'm doing, I'm not getting so bent out of shape with making sure that I'm in ketosis. You know, there's some people that are peeing on little strips and it shows you if you're in ketosis or not, or doing a breath thing and it detects the acetone on your breath and that shows whether or not you're in ketosis and all that. I'm, I'm not. I'm not doing all that. Okay. I've set my goals in, in my fitness pal. I'm meeting my goals every day, and I'm seeing some results. And I'm good with that. It's, it's your personal preference. You do it how you want to do it. Okay. And here's here's why that's important. Because if you try to do it like someone else is doing it. Every individual is different, okay? What might be a great plan for somebody else may be an awful plan for you. There are a lot of people on the internet that are saying, this is the only way to do it. This is the only way to do it. No, don't do it that way. Do it this way. Well, if you do it that way and it was great for that person, it may suck for you because each individual is different. Um, everybody has their own things that they will and will not tolerate. And that's going to determine whether it's successful or not. So whether it's, whether it's keto, whether it's Atkins, whether it's high carb, low fat, high fat, low carb, whatever it is, none of it is any good until you find the one that works for you. Okay? That's the bottom line. The reason why I like this is because and this is the, the the longest I've ever been on an eating plan like this without just throwing it away because the other stuff was so hard to keep track of. This is really easy to keep track of. 
but now that I have my fitness pal, I might be able to do just about anything and be able to stay with it because I can actually see what I'm eating every day. And that makes it a lot easier. You can't do this if you're not keeping track of what you're putting in your body. Um, now I'll put a link to a video that, that I think explains it probably a lot better than I am. Uh, right up here and also put it in the description box if you're interested you can watch that um, but to put this into perspective you know before I started all this worst thing that could have happened which all we have we've got like I live in a town of like three or four thousand people maybe five thousand people but we have like seven fast food restaurants here there's no restaurants where you can get like a decent meal it's all junk fast food crap you know and uh you know, we, we got a Taco Bell here a while back, and, and I, man, I, I don't know why, but I love that mess. And every day, you know, not every day, once or twice a week, I'd eat that double extra large, uh, what's it called, stuffed beef burrito. And it came with a soft taco. And I would eat that. I never thought about, you know, actually what I'm putting in my body, you know. And that was just one meal. But... Here's the difference when you cut out the carbs. If I eat a quarter pound of 80, 20 gram beef, okay, that's 20%, 20 grams of fat and 18 grams of protein, 290 calories, okay? But if you put that quarter pound of ground beef in that double X burrito, I looked up the burrito, that burrito was 42% carbs, 91 grams of carbs, 41 grams of fat, and 32 grams of protein. Okay? And you just took it from 290 calories with a quarter pound of ground beef to 860 calories for just that burrito. And that's not counting the soft taco that goes with it. So you're talking about a thousand calories versus 300 calories, okay? That's 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 what makes you fat. It's not the fat. It's the fat plus all the other carbs that goes along with it. The the tortilla, the rice, the beans, all that stuff that you pile on top of all that stuff. Okay? So that's just you know something that I looked at and, and thought, yeah. That's probably why I got all this fat around my belly. Um, so now let's get to the real question. What are we eating? You know, like, what do y'all eat? All right. Um, for breakfast, and, and I'm probably going to do some of these recipes on the channel. Uh, I know it's not all going to be barbecues, but, you know, if some of y'all are interested in it, I'm going to do it. And, and you know, this channel is more about what I... You know, my life, and, and this is what we're doing at, at the current time. So, uh, for in the morning, I always, every single morning, I drink bulletproof coffee, uh, and I'll show y'all how I make my bulletproof coffee. Um, but basically, it's coffee, and I know it's going to sound gross to you. It sounded gross to me until I tried it. But you get a blender, you put two tablespoons of butter, and it's grass fed Kerrygold butter into a blender. You put about a tablespoon or so of coconut oil in the blender. You pour you a cup or two of whatever coffee that you drink uh, in the blender, and you blend it up. Now, what I do is because I like my coffee sweet, but I don't want it have any sugar. Um, so I started putting in one scoop of my vanilla protein powder. Number one, it gives me some protein. Number two. It adds a little flavor, like a little creamer, and it adds a little sweetness to it. So I put one scoop of that vanilla protein powder in there and a couple of dashes of cinnamon. And after you blend it up, it's real frothy on top. And to me, it reminds me of a Dunkachino at Dunkin' Donuts. And I love those things, but this has virtually no sugar, uh, no creamer or anything like that. It's my, my vanilla protein powder it's your grass fed butter it's your coconut oil and that's getting your essential oils and fats in for the day 
uh, to start your day off anyway. Um, and then you've got your coffee, you know, so you don't have to give up your coffee. Um, and then we've, we've kind of adapted a keto pancake recipe into some keto muffins. And I'll probably do that recipe on the channel uh, for breakfast. They're really good. It's more like a French toast muffin. It's pretty good. So we have those probably three or four times a week uh, in the morning for breakfast because on the keto diet you eat a lot of eggs. But you also, at least for me, I got tired of eggs. So this is a, a substitute way of having a breakfast without having to eat just eggs uh, every morning. So that's how we start out our day. Uh, you know, a, a bulletproof coffee, some keto muffins, um, or maybe some eggs, some bacon, some sausage, ham, any of those things. I mean, eat as much as you want of that stuff. Lunch. We'll usually make our lunch ahead of time, you know, three or four days at a time. And it's keto friendly, you know. Um, we, we do a pot roast in, in the uh, in the crock pot, you know, with some celery and some onion and bell pepper, no potatoes. Um, and we, you know, we eat that. We eat, uh, we've made a egg roll in a bowl and eat that. So I'll go over some of these recipes and probably make some of those um, on my channel. So really, it's anything that's high fat. You got to think of creative ways to get your fats in uh, without adding carbs to it. Uh, the downfall is it is frustrating at times because you know there's no potato chips. There's no uh, for potato chips. I mean, you can eat pork skins. Pork skins you can eat them a bag at a time. Um, we eat a lot of a lot of pecans and and almonds and cashews and any kind of mixed nuts all those things they're going to give you your fats and your oils um, olive oils coconut oils uh, grape seed oils those kind of oils um, you know we're trying to stay away from the processed foods that kind of stuff um, also salmon you know at night you know get your salmon that's going to give you your, your fatty acids and your omega-3s and that kind of stuff um, asparagus, broccoli, cauliflower, salads, but make sure with your salad you don't go overboard with it because that can eat, increase your carbs as well. Um, you know, oil and vinegar dressing and that kind of stuff. So, is it a challenge at, at times? Yeah, it's a challenge, but I want to get back to a healthier lifestyle more than I want to go eat a big old pizza or a big old bowl of pasta or a bunch of breadsticks, you know, and so that's kind of where I'm at. So, uh, you know, right now, the way we're doing it, it's working for us, uh, and so we're going to continue on it and uh, see how it goes. I'll keep you updated on it. If you have any more questions, just let us know. So until next time, I'll be fiddling. All right, now for the Smitty tip, tip of the day. Come here, Sam. I told y'all that I rescued a dog, and this is Sam, big old 93 pound big boy. But there's one thing that you need to be aware of when you rescue a dog. And you got your nice little backyard, and you know, every time he hears a car door. But you got a nice little grassy area, you know. Well, when you bring him out, he does his business. Okay? I have found that there's an art to scooping poop. I'm a proud new owner of a flat tip shovel. But it's like Kenny Rogers said, you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Well, you got to know when to scoop and when not to scoop. Because sometimes that pile ain't ready. And it winds up being a mess, if you know what I mean. So know when to scoop. And know when not to scoop. And that's the Smitty tip.